Hello, this is Mark Bremer. I had a question from a fellow career user, Doc Matter over at the Renderosity site, about how you use the surface replicator to place objects in a very specific location. In this case, creating a stony stream bed that you can put water over. The terrain itself and terrain shader editor is how you get this done, and let me show you how that works. Right now I've got a basic terrain. I have already created a surface replicator that is using a cone as the object. I've got the cone hiding below the scene down here. But as you can see, it spreads out over the entire terrain. So what we'll do is look at how we control that and keep everything tucked very neatly into this little stream bed area. To do that, I'll come over to the surface replicator in the lower right hand side of the properties palette and double click on it. This will open up the surface replicator dialog, which is in the modeling area. What we need to do next is come over to use shader here and it looks in the center section. And when I click that, nothing happens. You need to go to the edit shader function by clicking on this button. And this pops us into the shader room where we begin the magic to make this work. Now, the Surface Replicator takes its instructions when you use a shader from black and white. It puts objects wherever there's white and keeps them away from wherever's black. So the first thing we need to do is make this a terrain shader. So on the very top level of the shader tree on the left hand side, I'm going to convert this from multi-channel. And yours may show up as multi-channel. It may also show up as a single channel shader, something like color. Doesn't matter. You need to go down, find terrain, open that up and you'll notice nothing changes yet but this is where we are asked to do something with a global shader I want this global shader to eventually be black and then the new shader or the sub shader will create turns white and places our objects so instead of multi-channel since it only cares about color I'm just going to make that a color channel it's red right now and I'll leave that so it's easier to see but now we need to add a, another layer in here I'll click the little plus button over here select the terrain layer when that happens, we've got two little sub-channels under that, distribution and shader. Well, for shader, I want this to be white. So I'm going to come down and select color and change it from red to white. And then right above that, we have distribution. And currently, it's set to none. We need to select custom. When that takes place, our preview shows us that we get this very modeled look that's going on. And that's fine. What we will do is control the placement of these objects by using the altitude. Now since the altitude is going to be determining the placement of the objects, we need to increase the influence of it by using the influence slider. So we drag that all the way to 100% because we want to have complete authority over that placement. Now you'll notice I moved it to 100% and nothing is happening. That's because we need to begin adjusting our altitude. By default, it comes in with a very wide range, and it's important to note here that I am building the scene on the medium scale in Carrera, so the values I'm putting in here aren't as important as the method, so please pay attention to the method and don't pay attention to the numbers so much. I'm going to go ahead and take this from the maximum value, which is like 83,000 feet here, and lower it to something like 5. When I do that, we can see that we've got a lot of red. And actually, why don't I just go ahead and change the global shader to black so you can see what's going on there. It will reproduce the objects in the white area and not the black. Back in the distribution channel, we can see we get a little bit of kind of fuzzy haze in here, and that is sort of desirable. That is because of the noise that's taking place right here. It's at 50%, which means it's, it's creating a cloudy type of texture on the surface. If I push that all the way up to 100, you'll see we're getting our bright, bright white going on, and that's fine. We'll come back to altitude, and I can play with this just a little bit, but before I do that, I want to soften this edge a little bit, and I'll do that by using the blending capability right here. So I'm going to blend this over something like 3 feet, and I'm pulling numbers out of thin air. It starts to soften up the edge a little bit right here, but we're also grabbing some areas outside of the stony region. That's not a whole lot of uh, something to be concerned with, but I'm going to lower my altitude just a little bit to something like three feet. That pulls it back within the banks, and you'll notice we've got a dark area right here. There's a couple ways to handle this. We could fuss with these numbers real specifically, or we can go back into the actual terrain editor and change this. The shader will update automatically for that, so it's not a big deal to change the terrain afterwards. I'm going to increase the blending distance just a little bit, 
to 5. That's giving us a nice soft edge right there. If we want to further create a little bit of random mixing, we can come back in here to noise and pull this back just a little bit and it will start giving us a little bit of that cloudy texture to break up the distribution a little bit more. Let's leave it right here and if we look in the preview down over here in the lower right we can see that our cones are all sticking in the river valley already which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to come back to the model room and since the surface replicator was the last item selected it's showing up as we look at it right now and we can see that our cones are sticking very nicely in the bottom but we need more of that. Let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit here and I'll render that again. All the cones are sticking straight up if you want to create a higher degree of randomness to that. We can go ahead under random rotation and simply enter 360. I'm tabbing through these boxes here and on random scale I want it to be all the way from the original size to something smaller so I'm going to enter a value of negative 50% after doing that, we can see that we still have just a few, but then we can grab the number of objects and start cranking this up a little bit. The minimum distance right now is one feet, and I'm simply going to turn that to zero. And that is giving us a nice distribution. If you find your cones or your stones crawling out of the base, check for the distribution precision right here in the center area. There's fast, good, and best. And the more precisely you want to control that, increase that distribution precision to do that. As I do that it pulls them in just a little bit further down there. This is where we could go back and fuss with it. But Right now you can see this is how you stick everything into a valley and we could keep uh, increasing the distribution so we get more and more objects in there. That's how you create a stony riverbed using the terrain shader in Carrera.